Hi everyone, Sandman here. This video is brought to you by a donation from Angelo, and here's what he has to say. Hello Sandman, the topic of this video I want you to make is why women say and don't like something, and then sometime later down the road they act like total hypocrites and do like it. I've met women who would actually tell me that they despise orange juice, for example, and then a year later I would catch them drinking a cup of it in the kitchen. The same with women who say they don't actually like anal sex or fingers in their vagina. Then somehow, sometimes later, they actually beg you to do it to her. I lost all respect for these women, and to end this, I've been a MGTOW my entire life, and I didn't even know it until I ran into your channel. Keep up the good work, and cheer. Well, Angelo, thanks for your donation as well as your topic. I agree with you that if you suggest to a woman that she should do something as simple as drink orange juice, they might actually say they don't want any or they don't like it in general, and then a little while later they'll be consuming it. I've also observed stuff like this. 15 to 20 years ago, I told my mother that I thought it was a great idea for her to put stucco on her house. She said it was the dumbest thing she'd ever heard. I saw one of the houses in the neighborhood with it, and I thought it looked great covering up the old crusty-looking bricks and would actually add resale value to the house if she actually decided to sell it someday. She shamed me and told me that it was an awful idea, but only a couple of years later she decided to put stucco on the house. When I mentioned the incident to her where I was called an idiot by her for suggesting stucco in the first place, she just pretended to be dumb and not remember it. But as we all know, women remember everything, so it most certainly was that she was lying. A few years ago, she was updating her kitchen and I told her the best backsplash was a solid black subway tile because her appliances were a combination of stainless steel as well as dark black. The backsplash would tie together all the different elements of the kitchen together, and when it was done to my specifications, it was nice and everyone loved it. But after I told her about the subway tiles idea, she tried another 10 to 20 different combinations of colors and patterns, forcing me to sit through sample after sample. I have a fine arts degree and I studied graphic design as part of that. Yet it didn't seem to matter to her, because all that mattered was for her to one-up my original design, and she kept saying that she didn't like it up until the point that she was very skeptical. She also mentioned that it was never my idea in the first place. Also, crazy as it might seem, one of the main reasons I finally broke it off with my ex-girlfriend of 10 years was because it took me almost six months of pleading with her before she decided to come out and take a look at some loft apartments or concept apartments with me. They still had separate bedrooms, but I thought it was a great idea considering that we were both creative people. She fought me on it for so long that by the time she decided that it was actually a good idea, I was absolutely disgusted and I no longer wanted to do it. If it took this long to decide on a new way of living, the relationship was pretty much hopeless. I think the real reason she finally decided that it was an alright place to live was because the people living in one of those apartments were a couple and this provided social proof for her. In our relationship, she could also never trust me on my vacation choices either and put me down for choosing it, yet at the same time, she had so much fun that I actually had to pull her out of the wilderness as the sun was going down so the coyotes and bobcats didn't eat her. Sometimes women behave petty and won't admit that someone else's choice on a particular matter is better because they're jealous of their partner or friend and they can't seem to acknowledge that someone else has better taste than them. Women are supposed to be seen as master shoppers, always making the best consumer choices. When a man chooses a better product, it's probably embarrassing for them because not only can't they design or manufacture the service or product themselves, but they also can't identify the most valuable or highest quality one. So when they say no to something like orange juice and basically change their minds a few months or years later, it really shows a woman's hypocrisy. They can't admit that you suggested something good and useful. They make you look like an idiot for suggesting it in the first place, and when you bring up the incident, then their hypocrisy comes out, and they try to gaslight you and make you sound crazy because they conveniently forgot that you mentioned it in the first place. You get to the point where you no longer suggest nice places to visit or interesting things to do because you're shot down over and over again, and then she comes back and recommends to you the original recommendation that you made. But it doesn't stop there, because once you stop suggesting places, because of the poor treatment you've been receiving, then she criticizes you for not being creative enough and not coming up with fun things to do. Women don't seem to have the same amount of creativity as men, and when we use our creativity to make women's lives more fun, quite often she's basically going to shoot us down and destroy our self-esteem. Another reason why women are so hypocritical has to do with social status as well as social currency. They don't want to risk doing something socially awkward because it could cause them to lose status. For men, on the other hand, many of us are hardwired to take risks so that if we actually hit it big, we have the resources that we can use to attract women with. 
Women, it seems, don't want to become social lepers because if they did, then the men with the largest amount of resources wouldn't be attracted to them. So a woman might say her idea is bad, but she probably hates herself because her own moral compass won't allow her to take a risk on something new unless others have already done it. However, there are bold women out there that try new things and eventually other women catch on to those as well. I remember years ago telling a woman that she needed a website for her business and to be on social media. This was back in 2006 to 2007, when women were slowly adopting the internet. But most women weren't on the internet outside of work because they didn't see other women using it in their day-to-day -day life. Think back to when people only accessed the internet on their personal computers, and then suddenly you saw a couple of girls sitting in a Starbucks on their iMac Pros. Suddenly every woman I saw out there was on a Mac. They didn't care that you couldn't do as much as on a PC, and that was more expensive, they just basically started using them because that was the thing to do in coffee shops. The same thing happened with iPhones. The vast majority of women out there have iPhones. But back when I got my first iPhone in 2008, a lot of women basically said that phone was too big and they would never use something like that because it was too big to fit in their pocket or purse, because it looked like a brick. It was an Apple 3G, which is hardly the size of a brick, but when compared to the tiny flip phones back then, it pretty much was. Now I see those same women that criticize me with phones that are the size of mini iPads in their pockets, and they love to show them off. Suddenly having a phone the size of a brick is no longer an issue. This female hypocrisy that you're describing, Angelo, is why women are always late to the party when it comes to technology, as well as innovation, or the implementation of new ideas. They never invent anything because it's not socially acceptable for a woman to do something that no other woman has done before. And the few women that try new things only do so because they're trying to be the female chameleons, mimicking what men did before them. Women are like monkeys washing potatoes. The first link in the description shows a bunch of monkeys on the Japanese island of Koshima, where a young female macaw named Emo, the Japanese word for potato, decided to wash the sand off her potato before deciding to eat it. Up until this point, the monkeys on the island just whisked the sand off the potatoes with their hands and didn't actually wash them. But they saw it was a great idea what Emo did with regards to washing the potatoes, and within a decade every capable macaw on the island was washing potatoes. Women are like these potatoes, they mimic what other women are doing, not because it's actually a good idea, but because it's socially acceptable, and it brings status and potentially attracts a mate with resources. Today women are encouraged to go off to university and get a degree, and then go to work because there's some handsome guy out there waiting to pluck her from the trees. But by the time they hit their dirty 30s and learn that it's all a lie, they're making six-figure salaries while living alone in their apartment with a family of cats surrounding them as they pig out on ding-dongs and ho-hos while watching Netflix and then crying themselves to bed on a crowded sofa covered in cats. If they ever played their cards right, that couch would actually be covered in kids and she would be crying about what's happening on the movie on the television instead of her pathetic life. The husband would also be working late and doing tons of overtime, so she wouldn't even have to service him sexually. All would be right in the world. Of course, if women were surrounded by other women that basically chose to stay home and raise the family, they too would be doing that. But as I've mentioned before, women are like lemmings or herd animals. They go along with what they see happening around them. So that you can successfully manipulate women into doing what you want them to do by using the media. If you show a million women women's behavior on a sitcom, and even if she thinks the actress in the sitcom is acting inappropriately, all the women watching that sitcom will start to mimic that particular actress in real life. I've often been asked by people, hey Sandman, have you actually seen the Aaron Rousseau video with the Rothschilds guy that says that the reason women's liberation was created in the first place was to get women working so the state could get more tax revenue from them. But I think it's bullshit because it's not twice the amount of tax revenue, but instead it's twice the amount of labor available to the economy if both parents are working for the same amount of money or buying power. That's what women's liberation was all about, cutting the labor costs for corporations. It supposedly meant that kids were going to be raised by the schools and not their parents, but that was already happening in the 50s and 60s before feminism with regards to the public school system. Many women probably said that they would stay at home and raise their kids because it was really important, but eventually almost all of them actually went to work. They were hypocritical, yes, but only because their desire to fit in socially is more important than a woman's honor and word. Women will generally backtrack on what they said if they can find a more socially pleasant outcome and way to do it. As I've said, it's not so much hypocrisy as it is herd behavior. It's also not that women are late to the game, but it's just that the vast majority of them can't take a risk until someone else has done it, and by then they actually have to follow in the footsteps or coattails of men. Women also always seem to look up to Oprah as some kind of original idol. But people don't remember that Phil Donahue was the king of daytime talk 
back in the 1960s. It's great that Oprah started her show 20 years after Phil started his. In this particular case, she wasn't late to the party, she was just the first woman to successfully do it on a big scale. Most of the stuff that I've mentioned in this video about women being hypocritical doesn't bother me except one thing. When you give a woman a good idea and then she tells you it's a horrible one, only to implement it herself down the road. That she pretends like she has no idea where that original thought came from. This happens over and over again. I also find it the worst when a woman steals another woman's idea because the woman that supposedly thought of something first absolutely loses her mind. But when a woman steals an idea from a man, the typical strategy is to deny and gaslight him as much as possible. Attack his ability to think that he's actually a sane male. I'm sure that's what happened to you, Angelo, if you criticized that woman when she said she didn't like orange juice, only to get caught drinking orange juice about a year later. Just to recap, it's sad that when you catch a woman in blatant hypocrisy, she just tries to gaslight you by pretending to be dumb. They never have to justify or explain why they changed their minds on something, and they play dumb when they're cornered about it. It is what it is, so just don't let it piss you off. Anyways, thanks again, Angelo, for your donation as well as your topic. Don't forget to smash the subscribe button and check out the MGTOW mystery link. As for everyone else out there, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the potato washing women away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.